we're actually uh, attempting to install macOS Mojave uh, on VMware. Uh, the reason being because I just sold a Mac Mini that I was using for development. And uh, I'm going to miss it, but it was really slow. It was a late 2014 model, which is uh, wonderful, but it just didn't have the speed that I wanted. And uh, until I get my MacBook Pro, I wanted to be able to still continue doing some of my development work on it. And really, the only way I can think of doing so would be to have a VM for it. Uh, I contemplated keeping the Mac Mini just so I could do the uh, uh, like an ESXi deployment on there. But unfortunately, I just let it go. And instead, I have ESXi 6.7 running inside one of my VMware, uh, one of my one of my machines. And I was just thinking, might as well just uh, continue. Hi, Fatima. I can continue uh, just doing the work on there. Uh, OK, so I actually have uh, upstairs somewhere in my bedroom, I have a Dell Optiplex that I've been using uh, and has a Windows uh, VM running on it. This is my son, Emma. He's helping me out today. And uh, all right, so this is the machine right now. So this is an Optiplex 7020. It has a, you know, a quad core i5 fourth gen in there. It's 32 gigs of RAM. And my VMware, uh, that's a Windows VMware right now, uh, is actually only using up 8 gigs of RAM. And it's small hard drive on there, uh, 32 GB. So hopefully, what we can do is take advantage of more of the, the resources on here and do this. Now, I'm following the guide that's on Sysnet Tech Solutions. I'll add, I'll add the link that I'm following. And basically, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I've already done all the downloads. The downloads really are getting the Mac OS Mojave ISO, which I have. It's a 5.9 GB download, which is huge. There's an unlocker for ESXi. And then there's the VM tools for Mac OS, which you need to install in order for this thing to work correctly, which is fine. So I think the first thing it needs to do is we need to unlock uh, ESXi to support the Mac OS installation. So in order for me to do that, what I had to do was, uh, obviously, out of one of those files, the unlocker. So if you go into the browser right here, this is it right here. This is what I downloaded and pop right into the data store right there. And inside my ISOs, you'll see that I have the Mac OS Mojave 10, 5.86 GB. That's the ISO for Mojave 1014. And Darwin ISO is the actual VMware tools for Mac OS. So first thing we need to do is we need to enable SSH on this box so we can jump in there and run that script to make this happen. Um, so let's do that first. So let's go to the host. And let's go. So Amazon, the way it works is you understand what ESXi is, right? It's yeah. just a piece. It's just a piece of software that runs on top. It's a hypervisor, so it runs on your hardware, and it allows you to run virtual machines. Now, one of the virtual machines we're running is Windows, and the other one we're going to be running is now Mac OS. Now, the first thing we need to do is, because this thing is uh, requires SSH, which is secure shell connectivity, we're going to have to enable that. So by default, it's not enabled. So the first thing we need to do is start this. So this will enable our ability to SSH in. Now I'm going to run, since we're running WSL, uh, we're going to bring this shell right here. All right. So hopefully we'll be able to jump right in. I should have everything set up. If not, I can just pop right in. So let's see if I can do this. Will that pop me? No, that's the wrong one. Uh, there you are. So voila. So there it is. I'm inside of my Dell box, my Apple box, and I can now do what I need to. Now, the first thing it tells me to do is I need to go into that data store. So let's see, the CD. Uh, so we're in the root directory of this. We're going to VMFS. We're going to do volumes. And we go into the data store. Uh, probably don't call it data store. I'll call it SSD. There you are. So voila, there it is, the VMware Unlocker 2.1 for ESXi 6.7. OK, so let's unzip that first. And voila, that did the trick. Now, in order for us to install this, 
we need to jump into it. So let's see what directory it created. It created a directory called VMware Locker 2.11. Okay, let's go into that. So we'll be going to that directory, and there it is. Everything is there. Now it says we need to get into the ESXi directory, and we have to make this executable. So with the way Linux works, Ahmed, is do you read this RWRR? Yeah. Those things are the permissions that those files have, basically. So the first three num, the first three letters, like um, there should be, if it's executable, means if it's something you can run, then there's an X parameter as well. So R stands for read, W is for write, X is for execution, right? Yeah. So those are three different things you can do to file, right? You can either read the file, you can write to the file, or you can execute the script. So all of these files are read, write. Uh, for the first three, define, de describe the user that is the owner of this. So the first three means the, the root in this case can read and write. Okay. And the second set of the second three uh, are for the group level, which means that I'm also part of, I'm, I'm the user root, but I'm part of this group called root. So this is the permission that the group has. So if another person was part of the same group and not root, like let's say we had uh, myself part of the same group, like my account, like Iqbal was an account then that would be only able to read this file, not modified, because you don't have write permissions. And the last one is everybody else. Yes, Fatima. Yes, Fatima. Yes, Fatima. And that would be different. So that's a totally different story. But anyway, so what we're trying to do is give this file permissions to execute. In order for us to do that, we need to add that X flag. So we do that by saying change mode plus X. And then the, the file specifically that we want to run is the ESXi install. So this. And now, if we were to list this, now you see how that has an X, X flag right there? That means now it's executable. Now, the, the, the thing to do is just to run it. That's hopefully this will make things happen. And it, there you are. It says this was installed, adding the VMX sandbox, so saving the current state and bootleg. And now we have to do a reboot. So we just do a reboot real quickly. So there you are at the bottom. You can tell that we're going to do an auto start power off. Um, and we'll wait for this to restart. And then we'll continue. Uh, again, like I said, the reason we want to do this is so there you are, we lost connectivity because obviously it rebooted the machine. Yeah. So we're no longer able to connect it in there. Uh, it's great. This is, this is a wonderful way for us to test out this environment. And if this works, then I can have an environment and you can have an environment. So you can actually have access to some of the tools that Mac offers that I think would be very useful, especially for the creativity things that you can do, like GarageBand, which I think is wonderful. All right, we rebooted the machine. Uh, we paused the video, so don't feel like that reboot was really quick. <laughs> it's not like it happened immediately. I wish I had a machine like that, but that's what we did. So we have everything made out so far, which is that whatever was required has been done. So now the next step is to actually create uh, an actual VM um, for this. And so in order for us to do that, we're back on the, the ESXi web end uh, logged in already. And I think the first thing we want to do is uh, go and start creating a new VM. So let's do that first. So let's go into the virtual machines. Again, like I said, I only have one. So we're going to create a new one. Uh, Sam, this is the way, I think I've shown you this before. Yeah, you this is the way you create a new virtual machine. And voila, well, we, I like to follow this paradigm when I call it VM because that's what it is. And since this is going to be my box, I'll call it Iqbal. And then since it's, this is Mojave or ESX, uh, OSX 1014, so I'm going to just say OSX and dot 10 dash 10 dot, I don't know, we'll do 10 dash dash 4. I'll just do Oh, it's I just keep it simple because yeah. if I have to update to a newer version, I'll just won't have won't be tied to this. Now I think you can select Mac OS. There you are, voila, and voila. Look at all these. So these were not coming up before. So this is 10.14, and that's what we're doing. Voila. Okay, so we're gonna put it straight on our SSD. That's fine. Uh, I think I'm going to create something a little different from what they're recommending here. So one of the things that they want us to do is they want to do two processors and a RAM size to 4 GB. I think that's very limited. I think I'd much rather have full utilization, like all four CPUs. And I'd much rather do 8 gigs of RAM. So that's why it's 8192. Um, 
the difference between what you're seeing on the screen over there, Emma, this is what they're yeah, using, yeah. right? So which is they're doing they, just this eight. Or, or they're, yeah, they're just using the GB note notation, and I'm using the MB one, which is the fine. So it's just MB is megabytes. Yeah, so it's eight thousand megabytes is the same as eight gigabytes. Uh, I use the the base two notation. Uh, I just kind of have been doing that from the beginning now, so I just keep it that way. Um, as far as the size of the hard drive, they're saying 40 GB. I guess that might be the best one, um, but I might I might increase that up to 64 because I might install like things like Xcode on there. So I think I need a little bit more. Um, now the SCSI controller they're using is the LSI. I guess that's the only one available. Yeah, uh, because that's the only the paralyzed one is the only one. Okay, paralyzed one. Okay, that's fine. And as far as the VM network. We're doing VM network, that's fine. So I don't think we can select, can we select which version they're using? So they're using the E100E. Oh, so we're living. So, so the reason I'm looking into these, and this is not something that's already on the, on the is because uh, the, the ones that, that, that bypass and have, have more efficiency, those are not supported by this, that's fine. As long as this works, I'm okay with it. Um, and let's choose the data store. So we have to choose which file we're gonna do. We're going to do data store. We're going to go into that ISO, and we're going to select that ISO that we uploaded, the 5.8 gig one, which is this one, right? The Mac OS Mojave. Yeah. Voila. So we select this. Voila. We're going to auto detect the settings. Everything is going to be good. Then, then it says we have to also select, customize some of the settings. So let's see. We have to do so that right here at the VM options level. All right, finally, enable hardware virtualization and performance counters options. And that seems to be under the CPU. So let's do expose hardware, hardware assisted virtualization. And we want to enable the virtualized CPU performance counters. OK, wonderful. So that should indeed do it. That's it. We just do next. It gives us an overview of what we're selecting. So again, it's an SSD. We're doing Mac OS. ESXi 6.7. Everything looks good, right, Alan? Yeah, that looks good. All right, let's do a finish and let's hopefully cross our fingers when we try to run this. So it created, see, it created the entry for it now, right here. Yeah, so OSX. OSX, right. So now it's sitting right there. It's nothing's been installed. It says it's not there. So we're going to try to run it now. So let's power it on. Oh, something's happening. So far, so good. Look at that. We already got the logo for. for Voila, oh, excellent, I love this, this is great. So that's that's pretty cool that it, it came. So we're gonna walk through this and we're, we're gonna install, install my account on here or my, my work account. And uh, I'm going to proceed to even show you guys how, how to install the the VMware tools. Uh, let's, I'm not, I'm not gonna bore you with the details of the OS X installation. So let's, let's say, let's assume that we successfully install the OS.